Hey guys, this is Rod Young. I'm coming back to you about this van trip, one man in a van. This is a uh, trip of all of my travels and adventures while living in a van for about 28 days. Uh, if you like, and if you like this video, uh, please subscribe down below. So I left off. I was on my way to Las Vegas from the Mojave Desert. I got to Las Vegas, and I spent one night there. And I think I've got some stuff videos there. Uh, so I decided to. Uh, go to bed early uh, and get up because I wanted to drive to the Valley of Fire State Park in uh, Las Vegas. I had heard so much about this park, how beautiful it is, and I just wanted to go get up and just kind of soak it in and just get up early and take it in. So I uh, went to bed, uh, fun evening in Las Vegas, uh, but I went to bed, got up early that morning, Got on the road, gassed up, and I got on Highway 15, I believe, to, um, I think it was maybe an hour, 45 minutes to an hour on Highway 15, north of Las Vegas. And I think I got on the Valley of Fire Highway. Now, the terrain, the landscape completely changed once I got on the Valley of Fire uh, Highway. It was greenery. Uh, it was real pretty on 15 coming up. But when I got on, I took that right onto Valley of Fire, everything started turning colors. It started going from a lush green, gray to a fire red, literally, within a matter of 10 minutes. So, and it was just really, it was incredible to see the, the beauty, beautiful um, rocks and the formations and everything. And I wasn't really expecting that. I'd seen pictures of the uh, Valley of Fire, but it's just totally different when you're there. It doesn't, I mean, the pictures just, they never do it justice. So got there, I drove um, to the entrance, went to the visitor center, and of course it's $10 to get in. Now, because this is a state park and I only have a national park pass, it didn't work. So I had to actually pay $10. I probably could have gotten a uh, state park pass for Nevada, but I don't think I would have seen enough state parks to justify the cost. So paid the $10. Started driving, I immediately pulled over, kind of like Joshua Tree, and just started taking pictures before I could really even get into the park. So, uh, got some pictures, pulled over, and then I got back on the road and I went to the first stop for me, which was called the Beehive. Now, what the Beehive is, it's some formations, they're rock formations, and obviously they're a result of uh, time, wind, water that produce these very, very unique formations on these rocks and it's uh they look exactly like beehives uh very very incredible to see uh beautiful so that beehive area had trails so i decided to you know pull over you know, park at the you know parking spots there and uh, met some really you know fun people interesting people they were you know talking about the different parks and national parks and uh but i got out and i started walking these trails and um it was a beautiful day. The sun, was, I mean, there were clouds in the sky, but it's such a crisp blue sky. Uh, and it was a really gorgeous, gorgeous day. And there were other people out there, and they were climbing rocks and everything. So I, I kind of started walking a trail where um, there weren't many people. So, uh, and I definitely saw some interesting things while I was on that trail. Um, obviously, there, you know, these are there are wild animals in the. Uh, park you mean i know you've got you know wolves and bobcats and you know all of the stuff that you know i wish i had my gun for but i didn't have a gun with me uh it was in the van but you know i walked the trails and uh, it was just it was fun it really was fun to fun to do um well i'm hiking the valley of fire state park here in nevada i can understand why so many people like it this is a beautiful place all this and I see why they call it fire, because these things are red. They're red as they can be. I can imagine what this looks like in the sunset. So, Yeah, this looks like a uh, wolf highway. So I am going to head back to the van. Yeah, I said I was going to go back to the van, but I'm just curious. These are definitely wolf tracks. And my guess is they're in these holes, these little caves. So uh, notify my next of kin. 
Yeah, I uh, just can't stop. Just too curious. One day, one day it will get the best of me. I'm gonna call this the Ursha Raymond Igloo. Anybody else see it? Is it just me? Yeah, those don't look like wolves. That looks like a bobcat. Those look like paws. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to make it back to the van now. Well, after I kind of walked through the trails, and I really did see a cave that looked like Usher Raymond, at least his um, face, side profile. I really did. If you look at it, you'll, you'll say the same thing. But, yeah, I got back to the van, and then I was talking to some, some of the people there, and they had mentioned uh, Zion Park. There's a... Um, there's a park also in in Nevada, or Utah, not too far away, called Zion. And I had planned on going there. It was going to be one of my last uh, parks to see because I was going to take another loop to get back to it. But they were talking about how beautiful it was. And, you know, you, there are certain things that you can see now that in the summertime you can't. They have uh, buses that take you back and forth throughout some of the areas. But in the... Um, Winter time, uh, you can actually drive your car. So I actually came at a great time to, that will allow me to see more, you know, through my car. So that was interesting. So, but back to the Valley of Fire, I uh, left the beehive and I took this path, which uh, was really, I mean, you just see these petrified rocks and, and petrified forest. Everything is bright red. Um, and I went to this area called Arch Rock. And of course, on my left hand side, you can see this huge rock that has an arch in it. And obviously, that's why they call it Arch Rock, but really beautiful. Uh, and then I saw um, Ram. They had a field with, uh, with Ram and they were just grazing. And that was really interesting to see too. I've never seen Ram personally. Of course, everybody see him on National Geographic's and you know, those shows, but I'd never seen them, per, you know, up close and personal, not even at a zoo. So uh, it was really interesting to see. They didn't want you to get close to them. I think they were very territorial and uh, it could have been a little, a little problem. So stayed my distance. Um, I went through, there's a campsite near the Arch Rock. Uh, I kind of drove through there because the next time I come to uh, Valley of Fire National uh, State Park, I'm going to, I'm going to camp. I didn't plan on camping uh, this time because I wanted to see the park all day and then I was going to drive back to Las Vegas and spend another evening, you know, in the city. Uh, so I'm at the, you know, at the campsite. It's really, you know, really nice. And uh, it doesn't cost but $20 to, to get a park, uh, get a pad to camp there. And uh, it's very, very inexpensive. And, and I will definitely be doing it because the, the pads were backed up to these rock formations similar to Joshua Creek Tree. And uh, it was really, really nice to see. So I drove through there. And by that time, um, I don't know, it may have been around 1130-ish. I decided to eat lunch. So I went to this uh, site called, I can't even pronounce it, it's ATL, ATL. And I'm from Atlanta, so I call it ATL, ATL. But I think it might have been Addle, Addle uh, Rock. And it was a huge rock formation where, that had steps that you could actually climb up it and um you, know, you could, you know, go and view it and, and look out over the rock over, you know, and see the uh, see the park. So uh, I didn't climb the rocks because I was hungry and I decided to eat lunch. So I sat at one of the uh, picnic area tables and just ate lunch. And they had um, a van, a bus. They had two buses, two tour buses that were in the area. And, uh, you know, it was just interesting to people watch and, you know, and do that. But uh, it was really nice just to sit, and it's just different. Like I, I've said before, when you're actually on a trip and you're by yourself and you can decide when you want to do something, you know, and you do it, it's just, you can take your time. I had I had no, uh, it was no rush. So I sat there and just, you know, for, for a good while and just enjoyed it. And uh, that's pretty much 
you know, what I did. And then I got back in the van, of course, and um, I drove to, um, there's, of course, there's another campsite on the other side of Addle Addle Rock. I don't know if that's what you call it, but there was another campsite. So I drove through there, got back on the uh, main road, and I decided to go to the um, Valley of Fire Museum or Visitor Center. So it's a visitor center that, uh, you know, it's in, in it's, it's based like on the bottom of a hill and behind it are some of the most beautiful uh, mountains or rock formations that, that I've ever seen. So I'm driving up to it just in awe of how beautiful this, this all looks. And then, uh, you know, I go in and I uh, walk around and they have a museum where you can all actually walk to where every 15 minutes you can see a video and then you can go out and look at some other, you know, look at some other uh, presentations there. And uh, I looked at the video and it really talked about how this, this format, this, park formed and you know over 2000 years ago all of that park was underwater so uh, you could see um, how the earth was formed how this particular area was evolved over time and it, at one point was underwater so that's why they find uh, marine life I don't even know the word dead fish maybe marine life um, fish and plants and uh, so they they see all of, you find all of this and uh, yeah excuse me I'm trying to think about this as I'm as I'm talking about it because it was it was, a, it was a little while back but I want to remember every little detail so I'm just trying to recall all this stuff so but yeah it was really cool how they had the um, they had pieces of fossils and pieces of uh, you know plants and illustrations of these things and what types of animals you know were actually swimming in these waters which is now the park and uh, it was really very very educational very very informative uh and i would suggest if you know everyone go take a look at this because it's really really informative okay so i left the visitor center and i went up the rocks that were the same rocks that i saw behind the visitor center and it was really the incline was really good it was beautiful and i went to a place called the mouse tank trail now, I, I'd done a couple trails, but I decided to go on this trail, and it, it wasn't that long, maybe a mile. But, I mean, I went through all of those rock formations that I had seen previously. You could actually go in and out of these rock formations, and uh, the trail was incredible. I mean, it was you had these really, on both sides of you, it was just rocks, and they were very, very tall, and was, you know, the trail was kind of all, it was sand, uh, which kind of made it a little more difficult because it wasn't paved and it, you know, really was a lot of work out on the legs to get through that sand. It allowed you to go and climb some of these rock formations and to get over the tops of them and see other things. And uh, so it was a very, very, um, wasn't a, a tough trail, but it was really a fun trail and it did it was it was it was a good workout uh you go and then you go all the way to the end of the trail and then you come all the way back the same way you came but it's just amazing how it looks totally different coming back so this is what underwater looked like 500 million years ago all of this was underwater that's why they find bones of marine animals, marine plants, skeletons, all of that. It all used to be underwater. The colors of these rocks change, so it may, after, if you're there for an hour, coming back based on where the sun is, it, it will look totally different. And that was really, really uh, fun thing to see. I didn't get lost, but I mean, it was just really, really fun to see. Uh, so I got back in the car, or the van, and then I went to another trail, and I believe it was called the Rain Forest Vantage Point. Uh, and, uh, no, I'm sorry, it was called the Rainbow Vantage Point. And um, it was really kind of the same thing, uh, except for the, you were higher up, and uh, it was really, really beautiful, really uh, gorgeous to see, and... Um, 
Also, I went to this area called the Fire Canyon uh, Scenic Drive. And let me tell you, this is the reason why I travel. To, f to see this vista and to see, to get up so high and to look down and see all of this, all of these beautiful mountains and valleys rock formations and different colors and different sizes i mean and you you can if you if you think about it and you look at it while you're thinking about it you can understand how this all could have been underwater i mean because the way it was formed the way it looked it looked like something that was underwater for a long period of time and uh, if you look at it that way you you'll understand so i'm there and um, I walk out over this, um, it's a path that walks out over this edge and it's a hanging, a dropping edge, uh, dropping cliff. So I'm out there just taking pictures. And uh, I think they had another couple out there that was, you know, they were taking pictures too. I think he was taking pictures probably for a magazine, which made sense because these sites were magazine worthy sites. They were very, very, very beautiful. And uh, so I'm out there and I know I'm not doing this justice, but, and I know this camera's not doing it justice either, but this is why I travel. I really wanna leave. I mean, I, I'm sitting here, I'm sitting down, just enjoying this um, everywhere from, from my left to my right. Uh, and then I was there just when the sun started to set. So, I, I really did not want to leave until, you know, it was about to set. So I am catching the sunset at Valley of Fire. And the crazy thing is, is on a Sunday night, I'm here by myself. I'm cool with that. It's an amazing sunset, though. I wonder if I'm supposed to be out of the park by sunset. And that would explain why everyone is gone. Oh, well, I guess I'll have to spend the night up here. So, gorgeous place. And I know that my photographs won't do it justice. I know, I know they won't. I, I, so, I really hope that people are encouraged to go out there and take a look at what I saw. You can also go on that same cliff and look over that ledge and see the same thing I saw. And when I tell you that is the reason I travel, that is without a doubt the reason I, I like to get on the, get on the road and travel. Uh, it was um, it was just amazing, beautiful, beautiful place. So I um, I was there for probably maybe almost two hours. And, uh, you know, get a chance to just think about things and be thankful for things. And, you know, everybody can't do that, but everybody should at least try. I mean, it's not, not an expensive thing. It's just you just got to make the effort to, to do that and be a part of nature that way because it's just, it's, you just have to. You have to for your, own, for your own mental health and for your own safety, for your own, you know, health. Just do it. Just go out there and do it. Please go out there and look at it. It was gorgeous. So I'm in the I'm in the car and I go out and I'm getting on the main road, but I'm going to take a left and go further up the, the mountain as opposed to down. I found out later, um, I think this is called Fire Dome or Dome Road. And this road is one of the most photographed roads in the country. <clears throat> meaning when people drive it, they take pictures of it. And a lot of studios, a lot of uh, Instagrammers, a lot of photographers, a lot of magazines, they go to this road and they have models and they actually just have this, this scenery as their backdrops for their uh, pictures. And while I was there, yes, I saw several photo shoots. Uh, there was one lady, who I think she was... Um, getting her engagement pictures there. She had her wedding dress on. Uh, there's another, uh, and she had a film crew with her. And there was another lady who was doing, I think, high fashion modeling. 
Uh, she had on you know, some type of high fashion outfit with a camera crew there also. Uh, they were they were they were littered there, and I I wasn't sure why at one point that there were so many of them, and then it dawned on me, this is sunset, and you know the sun is behind them, the scenery is behind them, the colors are behind them, and it makes for a wonderful shot. So I'm actually driving at probably one of the most optimal times to be on this road, which is one of the most photographed roads in the, in the United States. So get to the uh, dome, I think it's a dome mountain, a dome road, down mount, dome mountain, and there's a trail there. It was, uh, I didn't get a chance to actually walk the trail, but I did drive around the uh, trailhead and some of the most beautiful, it's just beautiful there. I mean, it's just, yeah, and I'll have pictures of it, but it's just beautiful to, to see all of these these domes and just to see this. Uh, we see these uh, mountains, they were dome-shaped mountains. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was incredible. Um, so I was there for a little while also. And, uh, you know, it's sometimes it's just, you want to just kind of hang out and just, just, just take it all in. And that's what I did. I just, I took it all in. And by this time I was pretty much in the park eight hours, still another, you know, eight or nine hours. So it was time for me to, to get back on the road. Um, other thing, it gets dark out there, so there's not much. You have to have Google Maps and some type of GPS to find your way. Um, so I got back on the, you know, on the road, um, drove back down through the mountain, and it's just like I said, it looks totally different when you when the sun is set, and when you you know before, and then when you're actually going up there the first time. Uh, so I got there, and it started getting darker, and then I, you know, I'm on the road, and uh, I can see the lights of Las Vegas and um, man, it was just, it was gorgeous. So I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm, I made it back to Las Vegas. <sighs> Beautiful day. Just a, just a great day, but it wasn't over. I decided to go ahead and uh, get back to the room, clean up, shower and uh, get on the road, get on the streets to see, see Las Vegas again. Cause I had my mask and everything on. I am going to stop right here uh, and stay tuned for, my next version where I will talk about what I did that night in Vegas. Uh, if you enjoyed these videos, please like and subscribe.